the, the expert on the uh, concerned subject. So today, this all the uh, issues we are also our party congress document are also addressing the same issues. So as a part of it today, uh, we are uh, addressing on Varna caste system and the struggle against it. Uh, we are happy and we have we are privileged to be uh, we are having a guest on lecture by our party is a PB member, Politburo member Comrade Shanga, who has been writing and studying and make many studies and uh, he has written a very serious article published by our central organ Rastar and our theoretical journal Market Planet on the past and approach to uh, uh, of communist party towards uh, this caste question uh, how to interlink how is it is related to the class and uh, the annihilation of the caste system the most inhuman uh, social system the human race has in ever seen so the, this lecture we hope will trigger further discussion among the concerned section and to develop a better understanding and to uh, applying on the uh, on practicing on applying towards uh, uh, annihilation of the caste and towards uh, an agilitarian society so we warmly welcome on behalf of the reception committee of 12th party congress the comrade shankar uh, let us start thank you okay thank you comrade kabir uh, well, now uh, I am giving uh, just a brief sketch of uh, <clears throat> the topic today that uh, origination of uh, Vardla Jati system uh, in India and the struggle against it. And uh, this issue is very much important uh, as far as our uh, party congress is concerned. And in our party program, uh, in our updated party program and path of uh, revolution document, uh, we have cited this uh, this relation, and this is the uh, for the first time in uh, we have introduced in our party program a very brief uh, and very short uh, history of our class struggle, and uh, and uh, the history of class struggle, and uh, naturally uh, we have to deal that. Uh, origination of caste and uh, Varla division in our uh, society. And uh, we felt that, uh, say I am giving an example, say uh, when we are uh, the first uh, party program in this way, if we uh, put the first party program of the communist, it, uh, we can say that is the uh, communist manifesto. And uh, uh, if we go through the first passage of Communist Manifesto, then uh, you will see that Marx, in the first two lines of Communist Manifesto, Marx summed up the history of class struggle, what he uh, studied at that time, especially on the context of Western Europe. Uh, he said that uh, in the Communist Manifesto, that uh, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggle. Freeman and slave, patrician and plebeian, lord and serf, guildmaster and journeyman, in a word, oppressor and oppressed, stood in constant opposition to one another, carried on an uninterrupted, now hidden, now open fight, a fight that each time ended either in a revolutionary reconstitution of the society at large or in the common ruin of the contending classes. This is the first uh, passage first two passage and two lines of uh, published manifesto. Here we can see that Marx summed up the history of cluster. And uh, starting from that point, he gradually uh, proceed to uh, other aspects of the uh, programmatic uh, discussion. In our case, we have also started from the history of uh, very brief, the history of uh, our country, where we to lead the revolution. So here we will see what is the problem. The problem starts in our uh, society is, you know, that if we look uh, India, if we look to our society, if you learn communism by reading Communist Manifesto and then look to 
Indian society, then the problem is that you will not find a freeman or slave, a patrician, plebeian, lord, serf, guildmaster, journeyman, nothing. You will find Brahman, Kathriya, Sudra, Vaishya. So in this way, the history of Indian class struggle is basically, it uh, started with the Varna struggle. Varna division is basically the form of class division in our society and the Varna struggle, say actually, in a sense, the class struggle of our society. This is the uh, first thing which we have to recognize. If we do not recognize this fact, then we cannot take a right approach to the caste problem today or the Varna struggle as a whole. I like to say the Varna caste struggle or Varna caste uh, system. We cannot take a right approach uh, to this thing. Many uh, communist parties, communist groups or parties nowadays, they are uh, saying about the uh, caste struggle and the, uh, especially the Dalit movement, Ambedkarite movement, so they are saying uh, all these things and they are trying to uh, uh, bridge the uh, gap, the gap uh, or rift which was created, created uh, in our history. So uh, they are trying to uh, bridge that. But the problem is if you do not have a profound theoretical foundation, if, if your uh, uh, program, if your, uh, if your understanding it is not based on the profound theoretical foundation, then it will be a pragmatic thing. It will be a tactical, mere tactical thing. When uh, there is a caste movement, caste-based organizations are uh, developing, caste-based organizations are uh, going for huge gathering. So uh, you can think that, okay, if we have our relation with this Ambedkarite movement or the caste-based movement, then we can also have a, a, a larger um, uh, social base. You can think in this tactical question, tactically. But the question is the relation between uh, caste, uh, 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 Varna caste system and the class-divided society, class struggle and Varna caste struggle, they are very much interrelated thing. So this is the first time in our party program, we have said very clearly that uh, uh, from the uh, beginning, the class struggle in Indian society, there are two, uh, uh, two aspects of uh, class struggle. One is the uh, Varna struggle or caste struggle. Another one is gender struggle. These two struggles are inseparable part of class struggle. We have uh, declared that in our party program, updated party program, which uh, is going to be discussed and uh, adopted in the 12th party congress uh, in Kojiko. So now I am uh, uh, discussing, I, I will be, I will, I'll just a very short presentation I will give that how in our country this uh, uh, Varna division or caste division or Varna caste division originated. You know that uh, uh, in Aryan society, if you leave aside that uh, Harappan civilization or Indus Valley civilization, if you leave aside that, because uh, nowadays what continuation is mainly uh, is uh, uh, there uh, in uh, socio-political uh, reality, that is that comes from the uh, Vedic uh, continuation. Because we are still we are uh, fighting against uh, Brahmanism, we have to fight against Monoism, and we are saying that today the fascism, the theoretical uh, basis of fascism today is basically Brahmanism and monoism. So today also we are fighting uh, we, uh, Brahmanism and monoism. So the continuation is there. So uh, keeping this thing in mind, if we uh, understand the Vedic society, we first we need to understand that in the early Vedic society, there that the society uh, was a classless one. Uh, many Marxist uh, theoreticians and Marxist leaders uh, like uh, A.S. Dange, uh, he also studied this subject and he wrote a, a book from uh, primitive communism to slave society. Uh, yes, although it is fact that many things uh, in that book are, are not correct, but uh, one thing, thing he did not commit any mistake that, to understand uh, that uh, in the early Vedic time, that was a primitive communist society because when Aryans came, 
they are mainly the uh, nomadic people uh, they are pastoral people uh, uh, cattle bearing is, was their main uh, occupation so at that time they did not know agriculture so uh, uh, at, at that time you know that uh, they the society was not divided uh, into classes so uh, if you go the rigveda uh, rigveda was one of the very important uh, source of history uh, of early vedic uh, period because rigveda was mostly composed in early vedic time if you go uh, through that then you will find that the whole, uh, entire works of Rig, rigveda that the tune was that was a uh, 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 common uh, communistic communistic uh, tune at that time there was no division there was no difference and division among the uh, humans so human means that are aryan within the aryan society within the aryan society there was no division and there was no uh, differences say in the uh, if we quote the uh, last uh, sukta of uh, 10th mandala 191 sukta number 191 uh, this is the last sukta of the rig veda uh, they are uh, they are saying that uh, meet together talk together let your minds apprehend alike in like manner as the ancient gods conquering accepted their portion of the sacrifice again 191.3 common be the prayer of these assembled worshipers common be the acquirement common the purpose associated be the desire i repeat for you a common prayer i offer for you with a common oblation those who offer oblation to the uh, gods they are all same common worshipers by your intention common be the wishes of your hearts common be your thoughts so that there may be true union among you so this is the last uh, declaration uh, of uh, the rigveda the last sukta of rigveda the entire words if you go through they are a very strong tune you will find the of communistic tune but the society uh, It could not stand in a particular place society always progress and uh, it means that there is a development of productive forces development productive forces took place in aryan society when they uh, learned agriculture from the uh, vanquished uh, population who were defeated by the aryans uh, actually the uh, pre aryan uh, society or pre aryan Uh, economy in uh, our country our country means that uh, indian subcontinent that was basically based on mainly the uh, economic activity based on uh, two things one agriculture and another thing was trade <clears throat> but when uh, vedic society started it was again started uh, from much uh, it was backward it the society went backwards and uh, it started from that uh, pastoral uh, kind of uh, uh, activities uh, cattle bearing uh, economy economy based on cattle bearing and uh, then gradually they again learned uh, that agriculture and ag- again agriculture started and this time agriculture the agriculture in the vedic society and agriculture of pre vedic society there is a uh, difference there is a fundamental in the pre vedic agriculture uh, there was uh, mainly they were uh, spreading uh, seeds uh, on the banks of the river so this was the in the main the type of agriculture uh, in indus valley civilization but at the time of uh, aryan society vedic society that uh, the use of uh, the plowing plowing the field uh, it was started and especially in the 800 bc when iron was discovered iron uh, discovery of iron was a huge impetus to develop the productive forces because uh, due to the iron it became easier to clear the uh, forest area because a large section of that time was covered by forest so uh, clearing forest and uh, developing uh, land for agriculture this is a very important thing at that time for uh, e- economic activity and secondly the plowing uh, after the discovery of uh, uh, iron the plowing is much more effective and powerful therefore the production of agriculture jumped 
when products are jumped, at that time you will find that uh, surplus was created. When surplus was created, uh, very naturally, like all other societies uh, throughout the world, the society was broken into classes. But in our uh, country, society was broken into classes means actually society was broken into vardas. The class division took a form of varna division. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisya and Sudhi. First time it was introduced in the Rig Veda. You can find it in Rig Veda. Uh, the Purusha Sukta, Purusha Sukta uh, in the 10th mandala uh, of uh, Rig Veda, uh, first time it was proposed a division among the Aryan people that uh, Brahmin were uh, born uh, from the mouth of the Brahma. Brahma means that uh, Purusha, uh, actually the Purusha. Uh, uh, Brahmin were born, born from the mouth and uh, uh, Kshatriyas, they were born from the arms and Vaisa, they were born from the thighs and uh, Sutra, they were born from the feet of that great Purusha. Later it was, uh, that late, uh, Purusha was equated with Brahma, the later uh, explanation. Anyway, so now this is uh, the first time a division was proposed in the uh, 10th mandala of that Rig Veda. Now, Mainly, uh, uh, not only the uh, uh, the Marxist scholar, but uh, all the scholars, near, mostly all the scholars, are agreed that some portion of this Rig Veda, they it is not very natural with uh, the uh, the structure of Rig Veda, the language of Rig Veda, it is not naturally comes there. It were uh, interpolation, later interpolation. Uh, it was mainly con uh, uh, composed at the later Vedic period and interpolated to the Rig Veda. So 10th Mandala is like that. A large section of 10th Mandala, it, it was like that. It was uh, assumed that it is later interpolation. It was composed in uh, the later Vedic period and it was composed to the Rig Veda. Why? I will come to this point. Why? But the thing is that uh, this division was proposed. This division was proposed actually in the later Vedic period, not early Vedic period. And it, the, com it was composed, these hymns, these suktas were composed in the later Vedic period and they are interpolated to the uh, Rig Veda. So this was the thing. Now the question is why? Uh, uh, now we uh, let us take Manu. Monu came uh, uh, at the end of the later Vedic period. Uh, when Mauryan Empire was uh, demolished, Mauryan Empire uh, came to an uh, end, and the last Mauryan uh, Empire is, uh, was, uh, Emperor was uh, Brihadratha, and uh, Brihadratha was killed. Uh, there was a coup d'etat uh, by the, his uh, commander in chief, Pusamitra Sungo. And this Pusamitra Sungo was Brahmin. And, and Mauryan uh, uh, family, actually, that, was, that came from the so-called uh, lower class, lower caste, or lower vardas. But Pusumitra Sumba was, uh, he was a commander-in-chief uh, commander of the Vyodrata, and uh, he was a uh, uh, Brahmin. And under his leadership, a coup d'etat took place, which... Uh, subsequently uh, killed uh, Bihadrata and Pusamitra Sungur captured the state power. And Ambedkar wrote is very fantastical that uh, Sumati Bhargava, the priest, the uh, main priest of uh, Pusamitra Sungur, he, he is actually Monu. He composed the Monu Sriti. Now, <coughs> if you go through the Monu Sriti, there is a huge difference between the uh, how Rig Veda put the division, Rig Veda only stated the division only. But uh, the Sriti books, uh, Manu Sriti, Manu Sriti uh, elaborated the whole system, whole system. That, uh, uh, and one, one significant thing just I want to say, that the Sudra will work, Sudra will work, but uh, he will not get the fruits. He will not get the fruits of his work. The fruits of his work, that will go to the upper varnas, mainly the uh, uh, Brahmin and Khatriyas. So, uh, Sudra will work, but the fruit, he will not get the fruits. Then what he will get? 
he will get only that thing which will uh, make him able to reproduce his labor power to be alive and uh, to come uh, at the next day work that is very similar very similar uh, explanation which marx gave that is a uh, labor theory of value and uh, how the uh, wages uh, are calculated and uh, so this is the thing what is the uh, value of labor uh, marx uh, discussed this thing this uh, this thing uh, very similar to uh, applicable to sudras also in in monosriti also monosriti if you go through monosriti monosriti also described the same thing but a very simple way and a, a religious way but uh, he described the same thing that sudra will work but he will get only uh, the uh, his subsistence only the things which uh, enough for his subsistence plus not that not much of that so this is actually what this is actually uh, extraction of surplus value for the for 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 this to extract the surplus value you need a system what system at that time the system is the shruti said that society is divided in uh, four varnas and the sutra since he since he uh, was born from the feet of that purusha or brahma then he will not get he the any rights any rights and uh, most importantly the fruits of his labor and all these fruits of labor will go to the upper varnas so this uh, this is the structure of uh, monusriti the economic uh, economic portion this is the thing but you think that uh, you see that as sriti books it uh, it was composed by human being at that time the, in the people psychology if you uh, think about the people psychology the sriti books they are composed by the human beings it needs at that time especially it needed a uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, a divine uh, sanction without a divine sanction because uh, uh, a human uh, being he composed uh, a book why people will obey this people will obey only if this book has a divine sanction so sriti books all sriti books at that time needed a divine sanction and this divine sanction must be provided by vedas because vedas is not composed by any human being according to the their uh, campaign their propaganda and the mass psychology that uh, the vedas was not composed by the human beings uh, it it was said apaurusha apaurusha means uh, uh, not um, not by not by any male not by any male means uh, not not by any female or not like that actually not uh, not by any human being because uh, from their point of view uh, from, uh, human being equal to male so they said apurusha the, that means it was not created by any male that means it was created by the god so the Ved- vedas was composed by the god that was the propaganda and that was the mass psychology so <clears throat> the sanction this divine sanction must come from the vedas so very naturally this uh 10th mandala or the section of the 10th mandala including purusha sutta including the uh, said uh, uh, proposal of division uh, among the vedic society it uh, had to be uh, interpolated uh, in rig veda and that was done so that was the reason why uh, a section of 10th mandala especially uh, was uh, interpolated thus there was a combined development sruti sruti combined the vedas were called sruti and this law books uh, is uh, called uh, sruti so there is a combination uh, to place sruti and sruti this sruti sruti combination was so powerful at that time society that it was very uh, easy for them to establish the class division actually in a sense class division in the form of varna division at that time it took place the, this was the origination of varna system uh, at that time and this is the character of varna system uh, i have already said that this is basically a class class division 
तो वेरी नेचुरली द स्ट्रगल स्टार्टेड अगेंस्ट दिस सिस्टम एंड वेरी सुन वी सी दैट देयर आर टू कंटेंडिंग कॉम्बिनेशन वन साइड देयर वाज देयर वर ब्राह्मण एंड क्षत्रियस हु वर द ऑपरेशन और द रूलिंग कॉम्बिनेशन ब्राह्मण एंड क्षत्रियो दिस ब्राह्मण क्षत्रियो कॉम्बिनेशन वाज रिक्वायर्ड why because you know that kshatriya means that was that is a, 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 a power of force force and uh, brahmin means that was divine sanction force plus divine sanction brahmin and kshatriya that combination at the uh, it, it developed if you go through upanishad especially uh, the janaka and jagavan there this combination uh, you can understand that very easily that how this combination took place and originated janaka and jagavalka so this janaka jagavalka combination is actually the brahmin kshatriya com- combined in india which was basically the ruling combined and oppressor combined and on the other hand there was another two varnas that was vaisya and shudra and this vaisya and shudra this uh, are some kind of relation a uh, mutual relation a uh, friendly relation uh, against this ruling combined there was a, a, a combined uh, developed that was made by the vaisya and shudra one may ask that how this combination can be developed because vaisya people was they were uh, they uh, the trader at at that time and uh, they they were rich rich people they were money they have they had money and uh, shudra people uh, they uh, they were a trader they did not have money so how uh, this uh, combination could take place you have to comrade you have to understand the society at that time not today today's vaisya today who have money and at that time who had money it was not same at that time the vaisyas had money but the thing is they did not have any political power yeah, they did not have any uh, social position so for the social position and the political power uh, to retain their money or to develop their money to develop uh, the trade actually because you know that uh, vedic religion was very much anti trade not only anti trade the vedic uh, religious understanding was very much against any sort of economic activity even against agriculture against trade so economic activity and vedic religious understanding was a contradictory uh, the phenomena so now uh, for this thing to get rid of that that shudra shudra uh, vaisya people they uh, had to fought had to fight uh, uh, the brahmin khatriya combined and for this struggle he found ali force ali force was the shudra if we go through the entire buddhist uh, literature uh, some of the buddhist literature some important buddhist literature if you go through then you will understand that how this vaisya sutra combination uh, uh, started centering the buddhist sangha both of these uh, varnas they were uh, <clears throat> mobilized behind the buddhist sangha and uh, i can give you uh, one glaring example was sudatta sudatta uh, uh, later anathapinda anathapinda is his name is actual name is sudatta sudatta uh, came from the vaisya uh, community or vaisya varna and uh, at that time he had uh, a economic connection at or, or trading trading connection uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, buddhist uh, uh, literature all the places at that time the known world in the all through the known world at that time he had the, his branches of economic activities and trading activities that man was sudatta and this sudatta uh, how rich he was that uh, i can say that uh, you know that sudatta gave a uh a uh, mot uh, i mean that uh, at that time you know that uh, initially the buddhist people uh, buddhist sangha he they used to live under the tree first concept was that that uh, under the tree but gradually they started uh, staying uh, w- w- within a mot and this mot was uh, constructed uh, on a on a land and sudatta he bought a land from jeth 
Jeth was a princess, a prince at that time, and uh, J, uh, he bought a land from Jeth. And uh, uh, what is the cost of that uh, land? Rahul Sankritana, uh, he made, uh, he, he, uh, costing is done by him, Rahul Sankritana and, and his team. He, uh, he, he showed that 18 crore rupees he, uh, he gave to Jeth. Uh, because the Jeth gave a condition to Sudatta that, well, I can give you that land. Then what you have to do, you have to cover it, uh, the coins. The coins at that time, it was called uh, Karsapana. This Karsapana is one, uh, one uh, 75 grain of uh, that time. Now, uh, our one rupee coin is 178 grain, according to Rahul Sankritana. I, I am quoting him, Rahul. So uh, he said that uh, at that time, 18 crore Karsapana, uh, he required to cover the land of Jeth. So 18 crore rupees approximately, you can understand, 2,200 years ago, not 100, 200, 300, 400 years ago, 2,200 years ago, he spent 18 crore rupees only to buy the land. Then he made the uh, construction that of, of mud, I said. So he was Sudatta. So one side, this type of people, they came heavily in support of Buddhist Sangha against that Brahmin Kshatriya uh, combined because, because Gautama is a man who first time uh, very systematically, very systematically declared that the caste system or Varna division is unjust. Varna division. I, 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 I do not accept the Varna division. Uh, so we very clearly and categorically and systematically under a very systematic uh, philosophical discourse and a very systematic organizational uh, struggle against it, he developed. Uh, before him, there are a lot of, uh, many persons are there, Ajibox were there, some materialists like Ajit Keskamli, or, or uh, Monkali uh, Gosala, these type of peoples are there. Many sects were there. But uh, uh, don't, uh, don't misunderstand me. Uh, before Buddha, there were many sects who opposed caste system. But Gautama Buddha was the first person who very systematically opposed the caste system, scientifically opposed caste system, under a profound philosophical base and, uh, and organization is he developed. That is a Buddhist Sangha to uh, counter this uh, Varna division. So this Vaisa and Sudra people came heavily uh, in support of Buddhist Sangha. In the in, in Buddhist Sangha, you know, there was uh, a social base. If you so, uh, one side there is a people like Sudatta and many many uh, people from the uh, Vaisa Sesti. Uh, it was called Sesti. Uh, people they came in support of the Gautam Buddha. And at the same time, there are Vajis, there were uh, Lichavis and uh, uh, people like Upali and uh, people like many people from the so-called so Sudra people, they came also in, they joined Sangha, they gave huge support, social support to the Sangha and Vaisa and Sudra, these two uh, Vardhans basically gave a huge support to the Gautama Buddha because Gautama Buddha launched the first salvo, first attack, systematic attack against this. One of the great uh, reasons is that uh, uh, why Buddha very successfully uh, could attack uh, this uh, Sriti Sruti combine? Because I have already said that uh, for the justification of Varna division, there was a Sriti Sruti combine. So Gautam Buddha is the first person, very systematically, he uh, said that I do not recognize the Vedas. Why? Because that was a profound uh, philosophical discussion. I am not. Uh, uh, I do not like to go uh, 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 in depth a uh, philosophical discussion, especially this is an epistemological discussion that why, uh, what is the actual uh, means of knowledge? What, what, what should be the correct means of knowledge? Here, the Vedic people, they depend on Shabdo or Aptavak. Aptavak means that the, the saying of the Guru, what Guru said, what Sastra said, what the... Uh, Sacred scripture said that is called Aptava. They, they uh, uh, according to their understanding, this Sabdo or Apto was a very important source 
of uh, flawless knowledge, means of knowledge. So this is ex uh, according to their epistemological side. Countering this epistemology, Gautama Buddha, he introduced another epistemology based on that uh, 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 rejecting actually all this, this type of, uh, this type of mm. Uh, uh, means of knowledge uh, like Atta or Sastra or uh, sacred scripture. So he rejected the Vedas. When Vedas is rejected, then Sriti Sruti combination is broken. When Sriti Sruti combination is broken, then the justification of a Varna division, which was established uh, in the society, that was also demolished. So the first uh, uh, counter attack to the class division itself was started by Gautama Buddha. And he started from the sun. He described, you know, in, in the Chullavaga Binaya Pitaka, he described his Sangha like an ocean, like an ocean. And uh, he, there are many qualities of ocean. He described uh, many qualities, eight or nine qualities of ocean. One of the important uh, qualities uh, of ocean uh, he described that is in in the ocean the water from many rivers they amalgamated they 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 meet in the ocean from waters from the many rivers but after uh, becoming the water of the ocean or sea water no uh, rivers water can be identified separately you cannot say that this water came from uh, Ganges, or this uh, water came from Jamuna, this water came from some other river. You cannot identify. All are sea water. So equally, he said that in the Sangha, Sangha also like an ocean. Here people comes from, from many directions, in, from many uh, varnas. But when they come in the Sangha, when they become a bhikshu, then a bhikshu cannot be identified by a Brahmin Vikshu or Sudra Vikshu or Vaisya Vikshu. A Vikshu is a Vikshu. Like a, like a party or a communist party, you cannot say that uh, uh, he, uh, he is a Brahmin. <laughs> we cannot say uh, that uh, he is a Sudra, he is a Brahmin. Like at that time, that 2200 years. Sorry. At that time, uh, you know, that. Uh, mm, uh, uh, Buddhist Sangha declared, Gautama declared that our Sangha is like an ocean where there is a no difference between a human being and another human being. All are Vikshu here. Starting from this model, started he started this model in Sangha and gradually he spread through the society and he propagated that in the society there is no division, no uh, Varna, Varna division is there. So very naturally at that time this uh, 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 Brahmin, uh, so Sudra and Vaisya people came uh, their support. So in this way the uh, very systematic uh, struggle against the Varna division uh, started by the Buddhist Sangha and especially by the uh, 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 Gautama Buddha. And uh, he uh, there is a very interesting thing that uh, he uh, said about the seven seven policies of a good state. Good state means the good administration. Because you know that uh, he came from uh, a republic. At that time, there were 16 Mahajanapadas. These 16 Mahajanapadas, <coughs> eight Mahajanapadas <coughs> was uh, monarchy. And the uh, rest of the eight uh, Mahajanapadas were a republic. So there is a struggle between two systems, uh, republic and monarchy. So Gautama came from a republic and the system of the republic was a completely different from a uh, monarchical system. And uh, here, there, uh, in the republic there was a parliament and in this parliament there were people who were elected and those people who were elected in the parliament he used to call a rajas. Many people said that uh, uh, Gautam, he was a son of a Raja. But at that time in Sakka Republic, Raja means not the Raja of today or later period. Raja means not king. Raja means the member of the parliament. So it, that type of administration he, uh, he supported and uh, he uh, propagated this type of administration. 
uh, in uh, in Buddhist Sangha and in society also. There are uh, seven policies of uh, good administration uh, that was also part of uh, both of us teaching. I am not going into the details uh, of, of that. But the thing is that what I am saying that from that point on, the struggle uh, started against the uh, Jati Varna system. And uh, gradually, uh, after a long uh, history, you know, that in our uh, whole ancient period was dominated by the uh, Buddhist uh, uh, movement. I, I do not say the Buddhist religion. I say that Buddhist movement, uh, the, uh, whole ancient uh, India, in ancient history of uh, a large portion, I am not saying the whole whole India, but a large portion, especially the middle and north, middle uh, and east. These uh, three portions were dominated by the Buddhist movement uh, at that time, and and uh, in the in the southern part of our country also, there were many movements. Many Renaissance, Renaissance movement uh, came up uh, up to uh, Basava, Basavanna uh, in Karnataka, uh, like that. Many many movement uh, came up. So all this. Uh, came up in continuation of this uh, Buddhist movement, and uh, and later after the Islamist uh, uh, administration uh, of our country, then we we have seen that no fundamental. There are many changes. Yes, after the Islamist administration, and then British came, and then capitalism was introduced, and uh, capital uh, started to roll on. But uh, uh, after many things, all these things, uh, the fundamental uh, changes uh, did not take place. Today also, you will find that the mostly uh, some maybe in, in working class also, you will find some blue collar, uh, white collar people are there. But uh, in uh, similarly in Dalit uh, movement uh, also and in the Dalit population, you will find some creamy layer. But, uh, I am not. Uh, uh, I, I like to say that it doesn't alter the main structure of the uh, Varna caste division of, uh, of our society. Today also, you will find that most of the Dalit people they are landless. The, most of the Dalit people they are uh, basically worker. Basically, they uh, do not have anything uh, except labor to give in the. Uh, market in the, in the transition. So this is the thing we are happening. So now the Communist Party, today the Communist Party is fighting for uh, uh, to establish a uh, egalitarian state uh, or socialism, uh, categorically if I say the classless society. But to achieve the socialism, to achieve, to complete the new uh, democratic revolution and to uh, go to the socialism, we need to understand that Indian reality, we need to develop, we need to bridge properly, not pragmatically, not tactically, but with a profound theoretical understanding, we need to develop uh, uh, the bridge, uh, the gap between communist movement and the uh, and Dalit movement. Because Dalit movement is, is actually, this is the movement of the working class. Many people uh, wrongly uh, think that it is a matter of uh, identity uh, politics or identity thing, but uh, in a sense, is not not true. It is not correct. In our country, the Dalit people mainly they are the working people, and the Dalit movement is basically a movement of the working people, working class. It not may not be a communist because communist movement is not only movement of the working class. Uh, this is also uh, elaborated in the Communist Manifesto. The Communist uh, Party is not the only party of the uh, working class. Working class uh, might have uh, many other, other parties also. But the Communist Party is the party which uh, can see the ultimate uh, of the class struggle and they are having very clear understanding of the class struggle and what they are going to achieve at final. So uh, this is Communist Party. So now we are... Uh, and another question may come because I have just very quickly I have to uh, 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 complete uh, conclude. Uh, so uh, another question uh, may come that uh, sometimes people ask that uh, okay uh, then he, 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 uh, he, uh, communist party will be based on the caste. I mean the communist party will be the casteist party, caste based party. 
or Barna West Party. I, I, I am saying, comrade, that a communist party is not a caste-based party or a Varna based party. Because you know, at that time, also, at that time, 2200 years back, if you talk about the Buddhist Sangha, Buddhist Sangha was the most advanced uh, organization at that time. They was not caste-based or Varna based They Because of the dialectical process or dialectical philosophy, we have a difference. We have a difference with uh, Dalit organizations. That Dalit organizations are mainly based on the Dalit. Thing. But a communist movement or a communist party is based not only the Dalit. Thing. For example, I am. I just an example I gave that 2,200 years back. If you look about, look to the Buddhist Sangha, you will find that many people came to the Buddhist Sangha. Not only the sutras and voices. Yes, the social base of the movement was sutras and voices. But the leaders who lead at that time, who led, they, they came from the all sections of the people. And especially from the Brahmins and from the Kshatriya, because Gautam Buddha himself was Kshatriya. And the Buddhist movement was started by the Kshatriyas uh, only uh, to revolt against the Kshatriyas. Because the ruling combine was the Brahmin Kshatriyas. And the Buddhist uh, movement, uh, the Apsarch was took place against them. And that was also uh, led by the Kshatriya people. Although their social base was Vaishya and Sudra, but it was introduced by the uh, Kshatriya people. Equally, you will see that in the Buddhist Sangha at that time, many big leaders like Mogaliputta, uh, uh, like Sariputta, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and many Kasapa and uh, many others, they came from the Brahmin family. And later on also, uh, all many Buddh uh, Buddhist uh, Acharya, like Nagarjuna, uh, like Naksena, like Vasubandha, like uh, Asanga, they came from the uh, Brahmin family. So uh, why? Because here dialectics is very much important. Here is the difference between a, a, a scientifically advanced organization of the society and a caste-based or varna based organization of the society. There is a dip, uh, difference. It, this difference uh, remained at that time also, and that difference is uh, exist today also. And that difference is reflected, the difference between Communist Party and the Dalit Party. Although we uh, consider that Dalit Party is our friend, they are a part of our class, but a Communist Party is not a Dalit Party because of the dialectical understanding, the relation between thought and uh, matter. The Dalit uh, people, they think that the Dalit movement or the caste, uh, anti-caste uh, movement or caste annihilation movement should be carried out by the lower caste people only, according to their thinking. Because the, uh, this, uh, at that time also, this thinking was prevalent. But now also this thing is prevalent in the Dalit movement. But uh, we know, in the communist movement, we know that uh, in spite of being uh, a person um, coming from some other uh, Varnas, since thought, since thought changed the matter also. It, it is not only true that thought depend on matter. Thought is not the servant of matter, but at the same, same time, thought changed the matters. So that is why the people from the other classes due to their thought, due to their enlightenment, due to their education, due to their uh, knowledge, they uh, can be the leader of the oppressed classes, oppressed burners, oppressed castes. So Communist Party is a scientifically made party. And uh, here the uh, people will come uh, from the all uh, sections of population and uh, like uh, uh, Lenin said in Russia uh, when he discussed that what is to be done, he said that uh, a communist can come from the uh, working class and a communist can come from, uh, from the students also. But the thing is that after coming to the communist party, whether he is upholding the interest of the working class or not, whether the interest of the working class is converted, is transformed into his interest or her interest or not. That is the main thing. Here, 
we are uh, developing a, a party, Communist Party today, with a, a very uh, 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 close relation with the uh, Dalit movement. Dalit movement means I, I am not saying about the new Ambedkarite movement. I am talking about the Ambedkarite movement, those who are basically based on the caste annihilation movement. So caste annihilation movement is here the point of agreement between uh, communist movement and Dalit movement. And, uh, and at the same time, with this understanding that in India, in our country, the caste uh, class struggle it emerged in the form of Varna struggle and caste division, it too took the shape of Varna division. And today also, more or less, the fundamental, uh, fundamentally, the whole system are moving uh, like same. There, are, although there are many changes, but these changes cannot alter the basic uh, foundation of the um, of, uh, of, of of the class combination and class caste uh, interrelation. That is why you are saying that in India, the two inseparable aspects of class struggle is uh, one thing is the the caste uh, struggle and another is gender struggle. Gender struggle I am not discussing uh, today. Uh, that is a matter of separate uh, discussion. And I think already uh, we have discussed in another webinar a uh, few days back. So it may be uh, we can discuss in future also. But there are two inseparable aspects of class struggle. That is the caste struggle and gender struggle. And uh, uh, with understanding with this uh, picture, we are uh, trying to develop uh, 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 unity of the working class, unity of the working men, not only uh, 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 the unity of the communist communist unity, but at the same time that communist party and the Dalit movement, the bridge, uh, the gap which was created, now we have to bridge uh, and we have to develop this movement uh, so that the class struggle in our country is can take a real uh, uh, character and it can take a vigorous uh, uh, and a very powerful character throughout the country to uproot the uh, ruling system and the uh, ruling uh, parties or ruling classes. So that is uh, my very brief uh, presentation. If any questions are there, Comrade Kabir uh, will let me know that whether there is any question or not. Otherwise, we can uh, later. Uh, with... Yes. Comrade, there, is, there are two questions already came, so I just uh, read out. Uh, mm -hmm. One is from Comrade uh, Rajesh KP from, uh, I think, from Kerala. Uh, Can we see this kind of caste system or any such a pyramid structure anywhere in the world at any period of time? How far Mars could explore Indian caste system? Also, please throw some light on the magnitude of caste system in comparison with the slavery. Uh, one question from one comrade. Uh, I, comrade, I, I could not follow because there was the. Update. Can you repeat, okay, okay. please? I will. Uh, I will read out again. Uh, can we see this okay. kind of caste system or any such a pyramid structure anywhere in the world at any period of time? How far Mars could explore Indian caste system? Also, please throw some light on the magnitude of caste system in comparison with the slavery. Hmm. Another question? Yes, another question from Comrade Natarajan. Uh, caste system is progressive in its starting state or not? For caste annihilation, communist path, Ambedkar path, Periyar path, which path? Played a progressive role in history. Actually, comrade, firstly, I I, uh, I like to say that uh, 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 Marx uh, at, at the time of Marx there was uh, a lot of problems were there as far as the India is concerned. You know, India actually the history of India. It was uh, some history was uh, uh, known, but uh, in-depth knowledge of Indian history.